I was just going to ask you, when, before we were talking about, before we started the interview, you were talking about running multiple copies of Audio mm-hmm. Mulch at once and syncing them together. Mm-hmm. Can you just explain how you do that sure. in your live set? Um, so, because it's a lot of samples there, um, you know, I don't like to cut it close or anything like that in terms of overloading the computer. Naturally, it's going to reach a limit. You can only load so many samples. Um, so when I started using Audio Mulch, I didn't know how to do this for many years. So in the early shows, I would kind of play a little bit and then make it all crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, I could give you an example. I guess it was less dancey back then, but it's like, you know, you can obviously, you know, start to process sounds weirdly on here. You know, I would kind of get into like one of these segments sort of thing and just, and then do live processing and then kind of switch over to the next template and then move on. Um, but yeah, it took me, you know, it's a pretty obvious idea, but yeah, I didn't actually think about just, you know, queuing up multiple ones. And I think that has, uh, you know, it's less pressure to cram more into one. Um, so yeah, basically every, you know, I would say eight to 15 minutes of this set, I kind of reach the end of what I want to do within that template and I kind of move over. And I usually organize those by tempo. Um, Sometimes they're the same tempo, but I think it's kind of like I move in tempo chunks. So it's like this template is, you know, 90 BPMs and the next one's going to be 105. Uh, So basically if I was coming to the end of this set or this little piece here, Um, so if I was to open up another template... Oh, so that? this is another copy of Audio Mulch you've got running, yeah? Yeah. Um, so basically, if I was running this, um, a lot of times with larger samples or something, um, you know, this is I kind of have it planned, so when I'm going to transfer over, I have something that you can actually listen to for 30 seconds without it seeming like I'm running, not doing anything. So. You know, it sounds somewhat busy in order to take the time. I mean, it seems silly that just opening up the other audio mulch and getting that template ready. The t- pace of the set goes by so quickly that that 30 seconds, to me, seems like, oh, it's a lull. So you kind of have to, you know, I always pre-plan it so there's something kind of busy going on that's not uh, totally boring. Um, but yeah, if I was to open up a different template, let me see here. So this is still playing, this is basically just a loop. And then this is a separate audio mulch file. Um, I would start it up, press play, and um, just go to the Chase Network Sync. And then I would go over to the other one, audio mulch, and generate the network sync. And now this audio mulch is chasing that network. So um, they're basically queued up in perfect MIDI time. And if I was to drop a sample over top, so this is like an audio vocal sample from one audio mulch with the beats playing from the other one. So then I would kind of slowly transfer over and then drop these samples out. And now at this point, you know, stop chasing that work thing. And at this point I'm on a new file and can kind of then progress through it. So it makes it so, you know, you could have a 20 hour set if you truly wanted to have one and you know it would never have to like overload the computer it can be as small of a file as you want you can kind of just sync it up so that kind of means you don't need a, se- a separate kind of master mix kind of thing where you're mixing between right things. No. you just you just kind of simply just seamlessly move from one um, yeah. patch to the next by yeah, it makes it, because I mean, in an I ideal world, it would be one giant foul, but that's just not possible with, you know, any program or any piece of computer, it just would be too much, so, um, you know, it's not a crazy headache to just open up a new one and, and do that little process there every, like, few minutes, um, but it basically makes it theoretically, like, one giant set of samples all in front of me, and even having the separate templates allows me to uh, just in my mind, like prepare, you know, and I can kind of jump around templates like, oh, I don't want to do this one or I want to go into this one. Um, so yeah, it's like almost nice to, you know, the, the amount I have there is enough for me to think about like, oh, I know what's going to be in this one. And then um, as opposed to having them all in one, I think it'd be a little much to be like trying to figure out everything, you know, 300 samples or whatever in front of you trying to figure out where you want to go. So as is, it's like, you know, a typical set these days, I think I have six to eight templates ready, different tempos, and, you know, basically work within those. So would you always go from one to the next, or would you sometimes switch the order? Sometimes switch the order, but typically, I, you know, like I said, it's pretty 
organized as far as how I rehearsed it. So it's like, oh, this transitions well. And, you know, just like I was saying, it's kind of like that crowd surfing moment where you get used to one bit. It's like, oh, I can get into the crowd or, oh, I can step away from the computer. So I think I try to have things at the end of a template where it's like, oh, this will go well picking up the pace or, you know, I can gradually pick up the BPM without anyone actually like hearing that.